Hi, I'm going to uh, show you some uh, high frequency plasma effects. What we've got in front of us here is a, uh, this is a commercial Florence flask, round bottom type of flask. Uh, it's what we call Chinex, Chinese borosilicate glass. You kind of get what you pay for with this stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's not perfect glass by any means, um, but uh, that's about a $4 one liter Florence flask attached to tubulation uh, to a vacuum system which is making noise you can hear it in the background and at the bottom end we have a, uh, a neon electrode uh, which is connected to a small uh, resonant transformer that runs between 5 and 50 kilohertz. Let's take a look at the vacuum system real quick. Um, it is running right now you see the green light indicating vacuum okay. That pertains to the turbo molecular pump, which is this guy right here. Turbo pump is on. You can see our vacuum gauge, 26 inches of uh, mercury uh, with respect to uh, atmospheric pressure here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, very typical for us. We're going to look at some uh, plasmas mostly in xenon gas. Here's the xenon supply. Looking at the regulator, we can see that there is some uh, positive pressure that's going to be delivered. So we're going to deliver that through these two valves. And when I deliver xenon, I will open this valve, let some xenon into the line, and then I will close this valve and open that valve, which will allow the uh, gas in this line, which is maybe at 5 PSI to uh, bleed into the rest of the system. I'm going to go ahead and shut off, well I won't shut off the turbo pump quite yet. I'll show you a high vacuum uh, type of discharge that's uh, representative of pressures in the 10 to the minus 3 tor range and then we'll uh, go ahead and look at some uh, effects of xenon at different pressures. Um, roughing pump, that's what's making all the noise in here. That turbo really isn't that noisy, but uh, um, I'll go ahead and put it on slow speed. So now we got the turbo slowing down. Alrighty. So the first thing I'll do is uh, show you a uh, glow discharge at a fairly low pressure Militor regime. That's what's in this flask right now. Turn our Tesla coil on. Turn our lights out. And let's put some sauce in this pool. I don't know if this is visible to you. Uh, you can see that the uh, glass is fluorescing. I can move around and you see an arc move move with me. You see that there's some color due to that discharge touching the glass, making it fluoresce. And uh, if we have a magnet handy, which I know we do, you can see that this magnet can be used to draw that electron beam around inside this flask and make all kinds of pretty colors due to fluorescence on the inside of the glass. So this is, uh, this is a glow discharge at a few millitor and it's uh, being uh, sustained by a very, very small current and uh, very, very high voltage. So uh, what we're going to do next is put some xenon gas in this flask and we'll see what happens as far as the effects at different pressures of xenon. I have now disabled the turbo molecular vacuum pump. I'm going to turn it off. Fish is now off.
vacuum is sealed. Alrighty, we will now uh, let some xenon into this tube and I will tell you what the pressure is and you'll see the effect. So there's a little bit of waste gas in our line. I'm going to go ahead and pump that out. You'll hear the turbo slow down, perhaps. We're going to go ahead and vent this gas out. You'll notice a green glow in here. This glow is... Uh, the color that xenon makes at a very low pressure. We're probably at uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, half a tor or something right now. Xenon at half a tor gives you this nice greenish color. Let's add some more xenon. And seal it off from the pump again. Here we go, more xenon. We're now at a pressure of 24 and a half inches of mercury, and I need to turn on more power from the Tesla coil. And here we have a nice green sinuous glow. I can really bring out that green color if I leave the Tesla coil at a certain setting here. It's really kind of pretty. Very diffuse green glow. And again, our pressure right now is about 24 inches of mercury. So we've added about 2 inches from uh, vacuum. All right, let's give it another give it another burst of gas. Here we go. All right, we are now at, oh, 23 and a half, 23 and a half inches of mercury pressure uh, of xenon in here. You see some different effects going on. Some very beautiful diffuse arcs. You notice convection is starting to play a role in the behavior of this arc. Um, the uh, xenon molecule is very heavy and so it's consequently very poor at transmitting heat and also the ions are very heavy and so they diffuse slowly and so you get these arc channels that form that uh, uh, kind of move around and, and stick together from one AC cycle to the next. So there's a very impressive effects, some, uh, some nice arc-like effects in here. Uh, and again, the pressure 23 and a half inches of mercury. All right, let's give it another burst. All right, we're now at about 22 and a half. We're starting to see some. Uh, some more, uh, I guess, condensed or uh, 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 less of the uh, less of the diffuse green stuff and more of the uh, intense arcs that form. Twenty-two and a half inches of mercury at vacuum here, and uh, we can adjust the Tesla coil and get some different effects. But basically, this likes to run at a, a very low uh, low power from the Tesla coil. Otherwise, you just get one arc that travels all the way up into the, uh, the pumping stem. Alrighty. I guess the thing to do here is to, uh, to add some more gas. 
So we will do that. I like these little tendrils down here, real pretty. All right, more gas. Twenty-one point eight. Twenty-one point eight inches of mercury. Some nice sinuous discharges. Now we're starting to see some of what uh, xenon plasmas are best known for, at least uh, as as decorative or novelty discharges. You see all of this, uh, all that stuff flickering around. That arc is really moving uh, quickly around the tube, and. Uh, this is a very good pressure right here for uh, running uh, xenon plasma tubes. Again, pressure is uh, uh, just uh, just shy of about 22 inches of mercury, maybe 21.8. I think that's what I said before. That's what it is. 21.8 inches of mercury vacuum with xenon gas. All right. Obviously, we can add add power and get a you know a different effect. You see, we've added some power. Now we're beginning to be dominated by this uh, convective uh, convective flow of gas in there. There's enough pressure that convection's really starting to be a dominant force in shaping this arc. It's not just running up into the tube at high power, but it's uh, it's sort of boiling around in there. Real nice effect, if you ask me. So, again, our pressure about 21.9, just shy of 22 inches of mercury. Let's add some more gas. All right, here it comes. We're now at 21 inches of mercury. Add more power. Real pretty effect, if you ask me. Uh, more convection, more uh, interesting patterns that you get here. Again, our pressure just shy of 21 inches of mercury. And this is also a good place to seal off a xenon. A good pressure to seal off a xenon tube. Let's add some more gas. Alright, here we go. That's about 19.8. 19.8 inches. Very characteristic low discharge from xenon. Less of that green diffuse stuff, more of these frenetic uh, sharp arcs. We can turn up the power and fill the entire globe with these sinuous runaway discharges. Real pretty stuff. That's that's uh, that's an outstanding effect if you're uh, if you're looking for some neat plasma and xenon. Pressure here, just shy of 20 inches of mercury. Let's add more gas. Pressure now, 18.5 inches of mercury, 18.5. Our xenon arc is uh, looking quite a bit different now. You can get these, uh, some real craziness going on in there. Lots of, uh, lots of convection. Nice arcs at the higher powers, really fill the, fill the volume. Again, pressure here, uh, about 18.9 inches of mercury. 
All right, let's add some more gas. Quite a bit here, actually. And we extinguished our arc. 17 and a half inches of vacuum. Quite a, quite a change in character from some of the lower pressures. Much wilder arc in this ball. Really a neat look there, if you ask me. Really pretty sweet. Alright, again our pressure here. Seven, eh, 17 and a half, we'll call it. 17 and a half. Let's add more gas. I'll leave it on a little bit here. We'll add some more gas. Wow. Interesting change there. 15 and a half inches of vacuum. These are starting to look more like sparks that you might see in argon. Very sensitive to the uh, power setting, but uh, brilliant white sparks. Xenon's of course known for that. The higher powers, we can really fill that entire ball with a glow. Very pretty. Our pressure is uh, 15 and a half inches of vacuum here. Let's add more gas. Fourteen on the nose. Fourteen inches of vacuum. Very frenetic sparks now as we move into these higher pressures. Interesting transition there between uh, more diffuse glow and some more intense glow. I can really crank up the power and fill that ball. Neat stuff, real fun. All right, one thing to do here, and that is add more gas. More gas. So here it comes. We're going from 14 down to 13. 13 inches of vacuum. Nothing really has changed that I can tell. Perhaps you get some crazier arcing in there. That's always a possibility. Uh, again, our pressure is, uh, that'll be 13 on the nose inches of vacuum. That's about half an atmosphere of xenon in there. That amount of xenon that's in this flask right now costs about five dollars. Xenon's expensive, I'm sure I've mentioned that before. Let's add more. All right, I added quite a lot that time because I didn't have the valve closed. Uh, we now have seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches of vacuum. Let's see what it does. Woo, crazy. So this is most of an atmosphere in here. Some crazy discharge effects. Nothing like the character that we had earlier. It's a very, uh, You'll see a lot of these spindly discharges. It's pretty, but I gotta say I like the uh, I like the uh, lower pressures better. I think. Most of the sparks now taking a route along the uh, the glass rather than through the bulk of the gas. Well. Let's add another burst of gas. See what happens. Mm. 
All right, six. Six inches of vacuum. This is most of an atmosphere of xenon. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to very close to atmospheric. I don't wanna blow the flask out or anything, but we'll uh, go ahead and uh, let some significant gas in there. Do one more here. Two inches of vacuum. This is as close to atmospheric as I think we can safely get. Atmospheric pressure xenon, there thereabouts. Why do you get such a much longer spark in, in uh, atmospheric xenon than you do in air? You can see the spark I get in air over here. Not very long, and yet the xenon makes a big long spark. I think that has to do with the uh, the fact that xenon is monatomic and you aren't exciting translational and vibrational and uh, rotational energy states in the uh, in the gas. You're simply uh, you're simply ionizing and and, uh, and uh, exciting the gas. All right, this is essentially what atmospheric pressure xenon is going to look like. Now I'm going to pump the, now I'm going to pump it out a little bit. Go ahead and open this up to the pump, and we'll just watch what it happens as it as uh, as that gas pumps out. So here we go. We're pumping. Pump is rolling very slowly. That's on purpose, of course. All right. So the pump just took a gulp. We're now at seven inches, seven inches of mercury vacuum. Let's let the pump have another gulp. Nine, nine inches. A pretty effect there. All right, let's let the pump have another gulp. 10, 10 inches, and there you start to see some of these uh, discharges through the volume. 10 inches of vacuum, let's let the pump have another go. Twelve. This is pretty right here. This is a, this is a pretty place, pretty pressure. 12 inches of vacuum, let's let the pump eat some more xenon, blow some more precious gas out into the air. All right, this is 14. Less than half of an atmosphere. Sixteen. That discharge is slowing down and fattening up. We can make it fill the volume of the uh, container more or less. Starting to see some of that very different behavior characteristic of the lower pressures. Let's let's eat some more gas. Sixteen. Now the arc is climbing all over in there. We can adjust that power supply and get that arc to go everywhere. Let's eat some more gas. 19 inches. That's real pretty right there. Eat a little bit more. All right, now we're at 20. 
20 inches of vacuum. I can still turn the power supply down low enough to get some of these fat greenish sparks. Now I can fill that volume with uh, long sinuous discharges that rise on their own conductive uh, channels. To be honest, I really kind of like that. I may seal it off there. Alright, let's let it have another gulp. Keep that power supply rolling. Alrighty, 22 inches of vacuum. We can really ball up quite a bit of plasma in there. With the right settings. To be honest though, I think my heart is sort of set on about the 20. Around there it's at 20. This is a real nice discharge. But eventually it sort of straightens out and then it gets boring. So, uh, yeah, there's some excitement there. But I, I think I, I personally tend to like a slightly higher pressure. Let's take it out a little bit more here. All right. 23 inches. We've condensed down to a single long arc. So that means it wants lower power. Again, it will eventually settle into a pattern where there's just one long arc. This is at 23, 23 inches. There's very little I can do to actually make that more exciting. Uh, let's pump it all the way down here. I'll go ahead and get the turbo going. So I'll turn the turbo pump on, let it have a little bit of speed and then we'll pump this all the way out and then I'll backfill it and tip it off so you can hear the turbo coming up so we're pulling on it there we are at 25 and you can see that tendril fatten out in fact I can bring it down and make a diffuse glow Very low pressure gas. We're at 25 inches of vacuum. Turbo pump is rolling. I'll go ahead and speed it all the way up. Turbo pump is online now. And let's go ahead and take this puppy to high vacuum. So as we evacuate, that glow disappears. And I'm going to backfill this to one of my favorite areas, about 19 inches of vacuum, once it's all good and pumped out. And uh, then I'm going to tip it off. Okay, and to tip it off, I'm going to light, uh, light my torch, get it going. So we can tip that bad boy off. All right, so now we're getting getting down into the millitors, and you can still see that green glow of xenon, but the gas is getting pulled out of here, and we're assuming uh, high vacuum conditions. You notice that at these pressures. Uh, magnets have an effect on that discharge. Those electrons are achieving significant energies. And uh, so, uh, and now you can see some flickering as this discharge is about to go out. Here's our tipping off torch. I'm going to fire it up.
tipping off torch. We want a nice little blue flame like that. All right, so we're ready to tip. Tip seal. You can see the uh, plasma globe has reached a state of high vacuum now. Some uh, power going into this thing. We can feel heat where those high energy electrons are striking electrodes and glass. So that's a good high vacuum condition. Now I'm going to go ahead and backfill to my preferred pressure and seal this bad boy off. Unfortunately, I don't have the Divium goggles for the, uh, for the poor camera, so uh, we're going to get to watch this camera uh, struggle with the uh, intense sodium flare from uh, tipping off here. Alrighty. So we're in a state of high vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and valve off the vacuum system. Shut my turbine off. Alrighty. And now I'm going to add some gas. Xenon discharge. Needs more gas because we're going to go down to about 19. Look at that gas rush in there and disturb that convection. Alright, not where I want it yet. Look at that gas just rush in and blow that arc around. Oops, that's a bit of a high pressure there. All right, 21, 20. I'm still adding a bit. All right. Let's add a wee bit more. Because I want to be about 19. A wee bit more. And there's 19. This is where I'm going to seal this bad boy off. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply down and make my tip seal right here. So we don't want to be too hasty about this or we'll crack that glass. This is under vacuum, so we want to make sure it's heated evenly and carefully. And we're going to collapse that wall on one side, and we're going to come in here, collapse that wall on the other sides. And this glass is now very soft, so I got to be careful. All right, tip seal is safe. Let's grab some of that excess glass, try to bead that up, get that out of there. Make sure we don't have a hairline. Do one handed. Alrighty. to do this one-handed, but I think we got it. Plasma my ball. Gonna 
disconnected from the vacuum system. Alright, let's just check it out to make sure it's doing what she's supposed to here. Alright, so there we go, seal off is complete, let's make sure it's doing what I want it to. I'd say that's very pretty. Very nice. Xenon ball is complete. And again, we sealed this at 19 inches of vacuum with uh, xenon gas. Real pretty. Alrighty, thanks for watching.